two. So that was amazing. <clears throat> that was so cool. I just love the demo. I love the idea, and I it just it, it, it you know it keeps making me you know wonder what is all possible with the Hololens because when I first was introduced to this, I think it was probably back in 2016 at Build um, when it was in California, and I remember seeing the technology, and I was just like, this is amazing. You know, what can you actually do with this though? And they had a couple use cases, and it just seems like every time I'm introduced to it again, it's like my brain just starts kind of running with all these potential ideas. And I think it's really neat. Yeah, I, I, I'm totally with you on that. And the, the, the thing that holds me back is there are too many new, um, too many new technologies to learn. I mean, how do you pick which one, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I don't, that, that's a great question. I think uh, I kind of share uh, the same sentiment as April where like, I like learning all the things, um, and it's just intriguing. So, uh, where I have to be careful is I'll I'll hit a rabbit hole and it's all I want to do, like ever. Right. <laughs> <laughs> is C sharp your rabbit hole that you've fallen into, or no? Um, no, but I mean, like like the smoker. Like when I when I did that smoker oh, yeah. last last year, it was oh gosh, I don't know what time of what the year it was. It was June or July that I just kind of like it. It was all consuming, like. Everything was around the smoker, and um, you know, I'm 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 shopping all these IoT components to like build the the little circuit board that that you know can read the probe and all that other stuff, and it was um, it, it was just consuming. And what I the the best work that I do in 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 my role is when I can get some kind of task that hits that. Whatever it is, whatever you know, I think I. And, and, and in in all honesty, I think it's a. I I think it's like a, a a a an ADHD thing. I've never been diagnosed or anything, but like from from folks that I've talked to who also have it, who who have ADHD, that they explain that this is what they experience is they just become consumed with whatever the new shiny is until they 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 have it. Right. Um, and, and that's what happens with me. That's awesome. Well, I think that's a good thing. I don't know because that's that's what gets you intrigued by stuff, and and you know you got to be you got to stay hungry. That's like something that I think um, is one of the best pieces of career advice I have for someone is just to stay hungry. So we were actually going to talk about some additional advice um, we had planned out. Uh, you know, we knew that April was only going to be on with us for thirty minutes because she has uh, she has to go talk with Plural Site, um, but so we wanted to you know just kind of rev through some of the the recent happenings with the pandemic and kind of discuss openly some tips that we have for working remotely. I've been working remotely now for 10 months since joining Microsoft. Um, and before that, as a consultant, I did it kind of on and off. Um, but certainly now being full time, it's kind of eye opening the different little tips and hacks and tricks that you come up with. And how long have you been working remotely, Cam? 13 years this September. 13 years. So it's, I think it's really interesting when you've kind of been in remote, um, this remote mindset, right? Like the distributed workforce, as Microsoft likes to call it. Um, you've been in that mindset for some time, right? Either 10 months, 13 years, whatever it is. Um, and then, uh, you know, the world changes and introduces this this kind of heat flash of pandemic and world concern. and um, uh, But with that, you know, there's a lot of people who are now forced to work remotely, um, and it's it's kind of chaotic, and mm -hmm. it's 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 crazy. And I've seen some really funny things, and I've seen some stuff where it's like, you know, I, I take these certain things for granted. Um, so I just kind of wanted to talk openly about, you know, maybe some ideas or additional things that we might have. Um, the the first thing that comes to mind um, is is just being really uh, considerate of the forms of communication. Right. So like when you're communicating with someone, like especially over instant messenger, whatever that is, if it's teams or Slack or whatever it is, um, be empathetic of the person that you're communicating with and also try not to be sensitive. This is one of my personal flaws where I know that I can be hypersensitive and I'll read a, a message from someone and I'll pick up too much of like I just start inferring a tone and then it gets me all pissed off and mad and it's like what the you know ah oh, anger and uh so my piece of advice is to just not 
not not try to read into stuff too much, right? And and take everything with a grain of salt. Yeah, you know, I I, I would definitely agree with you there. There's, um, you can't infer tone uh, generally unless you know you can hear someone's voice, uh, and right. and uh, you know that it's been a, it's for me it, it took a long time, and I don't just mean with work, but I mean everything that is like text based communication. For me, it took a long time before. I, I, I finally got to the point where I could I could you know like interrupt myself and go oh wait maybe they didn't mean it like I'm reading it right exactly yeah yeah and uh, so that's one thing that I've tried to you know recognize about myself and I think I've grown better at that um, just recently there was uh, events where I was becoming kind of you know oversensitive to things and it was upsetting me and it leaked into personal life and it's like you can't let that happen, right? So another piece of advice is to let work lie and kind of set boundaries. So with, with the concept of boundaries, um, like I'll have a hard stop. Working remotely, I've noticed that a lot of the peers that are forced into it, they kind of work now all the time. Mm. <laughs> where, where, you know, when you could physically leave where you worked before, it was a lot easier than working, you know, remotely if you're home all the time. Um, you have this sense of, well, I'm home and the computer's there. So technically this is my workstation. I can just work all the time and we'll receive emails, you know, 11, you know, midnight, whatever time it is. And it's like set boundaries, know that you have a hard stop and then disconnect. See, I think, I think that's something that I, I might take for granted having done this for so long. Cause I like, when, mm -hmm. so, so like I've always, ever since I've worked from home, I've always had a dedicated office space. Yeah, and and I I go into that office and that starts my work day, and I leave that office and that ends my work day. Now yeah. they may not be the same time every day, but and uh, in, in, in general they are. In general, I start my work day around 10 a.m. Central and end it at about 6:30 p.m. Central, the, the okay. give or take. Um, sure. And that by the way, that's one of the that's one of the advantages to working in a very large company spread out spread across you know. Uh, multiple dozens and dozens of time zones is no one really cares if I come to work at 10, you know, because right. I've got a lot of coworkers on the West Coast. That's 8 a.m. for them. <clears throat> right. Yeah, yeah. And likewise, I take advantage of that as well. Like for me, my personal work schedule is a lot different. So I, I start around 7 a.m., you know, 7, 7.30 depends. And then I'll try to end 3.30 or 4, mm -hmm. right? So I give myself that half an hour um, but that's another thing is like throughout the day, try to break it up a little bit, you know, try to make sure that you have a concise time where if you're going to take lunch and go spend it, you know, that time with your family, make sure that you actually, you know, don't take a working lunch. Don't, don't sit there and, and, um, you know, shovel food in your mouth while you're listening to a call or something like that. I mean, it can be done and that's definitely an advantage, but at the same time, it's good to kind of have that mental disconnect. And I think that's something that I've been trying to be better at. See, I, I, I wish I were better at that. One of the, what I, what I have found happens to me is I end up getting randomized, whether that happens, you know, whether that happens externally, somebody externally randomizes me or I randomize myself by like, oh, look at what's happening on the news, which lately yeah. has been, you know, more than, more than enough <laughs> to get me distracted. <laughs> um, I, I feel like if I were better about like taking like defined, okay, right now I am going to go not do anything work related for 30 minutes. I'm going to um, I'm going to go play Xbox or I'm going to go eat and read or whatever. I feel like if I if I would be better about doing that, I would be more productive. But as mm -hmm. as it is, like I said, I kind of walk through this door behind me at 10 and I'm in Microsoft mode, but I'm in Microsoft mode, but now I can't focus. You see where I'm going with this. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. So, do you have any advice for like how to organize and prioritize and like just be motivated because I know that there's some people who struggle with that now whereas you know they would go into uh, you know on campus for example and they were kind of in this mode of almost just it's almost like groupthink or like um, herding where there's a meeting so they'll just shuffle over here and then they'll just kind of be present but not really you know I, 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 that's probably a terrible way of phrasing it but it just seems like they're almost like lost being remote. No, I, I do, and it's 
constantly surprises my surprises me to hear myself say this because um, going through you know all you know all my schooling years past and and even work before i started working from home um and even work up until a couple of years ago um mm-hmm. i avoided group work I'm always the person who avoids the group because I don't like relying on other people to get stuff done. I don't like feeling like like my productivity or like in the case of school, my grades depend on other people, right? Mm-hmm. But um, something that I've learned in recent years, and and I, I, I um, it's got poor Scott. I mean, if he were here, he's heard me say this so many times. <laughs> um, the 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 something I've learned in recent years is. I work really well with, you know, one other person, right? If, if there's somebody mm-hmm. else who is, you know, dedicated to the job, who I get along with, and we can, you know, we can chat, you know, off topic occasionally, but then get back on topic, and, and, and that we just work really well together. If I find somebody that I can do that with, oh, man, that is the productivity cheat code right there. That That's yeah. productivity god mode is what that is. <laughs> um no, so like there, all the all the .NET um, Microsoft Learn modules that are out there. Uh, there's a couple out there that Scott and I didn't write. There's one that Wade wrote, and then there's a couple that the Learn team have written. But like the the like the Entity Framework module and the mm-hmm. ASP.NET Core Identity module and the Web API module. Um, I think we might have another one. I can't remember. Anyway, Scott and I co-wrote all of those, and we did it like literally pair writing like you pair program this was pair writing in in um visual studio code wow that's cool and i it 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 really blew me away at how productive it was because i didn't expect it to be but i you know when when scott and i undertook oh let's work on this together it was it it was just one of those things where oh yeah let's work on this together and get it done i didn't Mm -hmm. realize that it was going to be so effective yeah, um, interesting. Because there's this... I almost think of it I think of it being almost like counterproductive. Like I would see like no, my opinions, you know, and that like there would be clash and so that's really that's really neat. I like that. <clears throat> no, so Did... the the and I yeah, if if Scott were here, we could talk about it more. He he might even be watching the stream and and uh, might chime in on the chat. I don't know. <laughs> but the um the 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 instant feedback loop right mm-hmm. i think this sentence should say this and i i would throw a sentence out there and um right away he's like i would rephrase it to say this same point mm-hmm. but it's simpler oh okay yeah. well then we go down a few more steps and then he'll throw out a line and i you know again instant feedback um it's like it's like real time github reviews like what we do with our documentation Mm-hmm. But but there's not that there's not that that asynchronous wait right there's no async right, wait yeah. it's all it's all sync <laughs> yeah and it's it's almost like Tetris where you're both kind of nudging a piece like here's this oh, twist that one okay two minds you know thinking in tandem did so you mentioned Visual Studio Code I just want to double click on that for a second did did you guys end up using like Live Share. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, yeah. So awesome. so folks on the stream who um who who haven't actually written or, or contributed to any docs um all of our docs you know on the on the docs platform are authored in markdown um which the great thing about markdown as a markup format uh, markup format the great thing about markdown is that it's designed to be completely legible in just plain text right that it doesn't need to be rendered like html so um, yeah, really, Visual Studio Code is is an ideal Markdown editor. So yeah, we we would just use LiveShare. Interesting. Um, I'm curious, like if well, now we're kind of getting a bit off subject with some tips. But I was going to ask, in terms of like docs and contributors, and um, I know one of our goals is to really try to encourage external contributions, right? And I know that we just had Damian Bowden on recently, um, and he's a prolific contributor. Do you think it would have been an interesting experiment to potentially collaborate with someone externally via live share on a doc itself? It very well might be. Yeah. No, if we could, if someone like Damien or somebody wanted to uh, work like with us on the stream, even, I think that would be a, a great exercise. That'd be really cool. Yeah. I think we should try that sometime. I'd be curious about that, at least from an experiment standpoint. Um, 
Cool. Well, what other what other tips can you think of? Uh, one thing I wanted to touch on real quick, uh, specifically, was you know like this notion of um, uh, like there's it's almost like ethics within the the construct of video uh, conferencing where some people are like a hard pass on sharing their video and some people are um, you know on the other side of the fence that simply say you need to uh, you need to share your video otherwise it's like being in a meeting in person with someone who has a bag over their head mm -hmm. so I'm kind of I, I can see both sides and I'm kind of curious you know based on this conflict what are your thoughts about that? You know, my 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 feelings have evolved since joining the team that we're on, because um, mm -hmm. the team that we're on has a has a pro camera culture, and okay. and prior to the team that we're on, all the teams that I'd been on were were not right. So you know, you get onto a conference call and you'd be talking to an avatar. Um, yeah, and then I started working on on the team that we're on with folks like. Scott and Bill Wagner and and Myra Wenzel and some others and and it was just a thing the cameras were just on and yeah so you know when in Rome which yeah. is when I started running with the camera on and now I've gotten to the point where when I'm in a meeting and I'm with someone from another team or, or another company or whatever and that's not the culture they're in and they want to have the camera off I feel kind of annoyed <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. That's I'm interesting. like, why? Why are you coming to this meeting, like you said, with a bag on your head? Um, yeah. And I, I get, I get the discomfort that comes from it because certainly that was, that was, that's me. I'm, I, I am a. I am a, a walking mass of anxieties, just like a lot of us, uh, in, yeah. particularly in this industry. Um, we're just wired that way, and. Um, I, I get it, but I, I will tell you that if you if you just close your eyes and take the leap, I think it really helps the communication. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think for me, there was one thing that was initially lacking with some of the tooling. Like, I prefer the blurred background. In fact, I, uh, you know, we're limited to Skype with how we're streaming here on Twitch right now. But I prefer, um, um, like, actually projecting a background instead of having. Because uh, I'm in my basement and it's unfinished, so it's like at this point in time, I would prefer not to share that mm -hmm. uh, with the world. And you know, we're finishing it this summer, but uh, regardless, it's just one of those things where it's kind of a bit of discomfort. So I, that's why it's easy for me to see both sides of it. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's that's interesting. Um, I still turn off my camera if I'm if I'm in like a lunch meeting or if I haven't taken lunch and I've got to eat and I'm in a meeting. Um, I'll turn off my camera just because I'm not comf really that comfortable, you know, like stuffing my face on camera. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that makes sense. That makes uh, sense. Uh, uh, Unless it's specifically called as a lunch meeting. If it's specifically called as a lunch meeting and we're all stuffing our face on camera, that's one thing. Um, but, but yeah, there's, there's that or, um, you know, uh, occasionally, very occasionally, I'll be in, in some sort of a state that's not fit for public consumption. Um, like, you know, what wearing pajamas or whatever that i'm just like okay yeah we're not that's, doing that's right my now. that's my daily attire what are you talking about that's that's one of the best <laughs> well that actually brings up a point that actually brings up a good point that's another thing that that i have picked up in recent years um because of coming to the dot net docs team and and we had that kind of pro camera culture i having worked from home for a number of years I'm ashamed to admit this, but I know I'm not alone. I know there's lots of people out there who would be the exact same way. I would have days where I couldn't remember the last time I changed clothes, right? I'd be like, how long have I been wearing? Um, and and <laughs> since, since being on this team with the pro camera culture, that has, like, first thing in the morning when I get up and it's time to, quote, go to work, I say first thing. I'm a late riser. We've established this. Yeah. But when it's time for me to go to work, um, the first thing that I do is go to the closet, change shirts, right? Right. Um, and it also gives me a, a real good excuse to wear all these, like, conference shirts that I would never really wear generally for any other reason. Yeah. But, the, you know, I feel like, oh, you know what? It's great for just throwing on to, to, to you know, wear at work today. Wear yeah. at work. Right. Yeah, that's, that's, that's cool. I, uh... I don't know. Well, I, I work out, so I try to, you know, after exercising, you know, get sweaty, go jump in the shower, and then, you know, don't put the same stuff on because it was sweaty. So, like, for me, 
Um, and that's another interesting thing. Like uh, m- maybe that's a potential hack as to, you know, you can break your day up with a bit of exercise. So I've got my, my bike uh, over here and I've got, you know, the weights and we got an elliptical or uh, treadmill, those things, or, or just go for a walk You know, take the dog for a walk, walk with the family. Um, but, you know, breaking the day up, I think, and I'm just going to go back to saying that, like, if you can break your day up a bit, it's going to be like prolifically better and uh, it gives you that mental break and, it, you know, disconnect for a little bit. And that's, I guess, one piece of advice that so I try our, to. Our, our friend Luis, who, who is in the chat room, he says these streams are one of the few things that remind me it's Thursday. It is Thursday, right? <laughs> um, I was having that conversation with my wife yesterday, actually. And she said, because um, she, she has, for, you know, for years now been primarily a stay-at-home mom. And now she... Uh, we, we, we changed her job description. Her job description is now author. She published her first book on Amazon a few weeks ago. That's and awesome. um, so she now officially works from home, although lately her work from home is, is really just, you know, social media amplifying her book. And uh, we homeschool our kids um, because none of the three of them got along well with public school, and that's fine. It's not for everybody. Um, but... We, in because of this crisis, because she's been completely staying at home. It used to be like you know, during the week she would go out and run little errands, and then the weekends were pretty much just lays around the house. But because of this crisis and everybody's just staying home constantly, she's lost track of what day it is. She's like, the only yeah. way I know it's Thursday is because you're streaming and it's your D and D night. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah, uh, ironically, my wife uh, is also a stay at home mom, and she. Uh, just yesterday said the same thing because I was talking to her and I'm like, yeah, you know, uh, May 15th is coming up and that's almost like a month away now. And, and she's like, May 5th, like the middle of May. She did, she forgot what month it was. Right. So she's like, oh my God. So we're just, yeah, I mean, see, that's, that's what I'm saying is it's like, I, I feel like those of us who like work, like work from home full time and have for, you know, months or years. Um, we have that clock built into us. We like know the work week. We like know the weekend. And, you know, I, I, in, in my case, like I say, this, this is my office door. So I avoid this place on the weekends, right? On the yeah. weekends, if I have anything work related, I'm going to be doing it on my surface from my couch. Yeah. And um, the, the, other people don't have that. Other people don't right. have that built into them yet, right? So it's yeah. it's kind of been interesting watching the whole world kind of go uh, the, this 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 culture shock that has just been thrust upon them. That I think right. some of us were already kind of adapted to. It's a little bit yeah. different. Like in the case of Scott, the reason Scott's not here with us is he's having to spend a lot of time uh, working with these kids on their on their their homework. Yeah. Um, a lot of folks are having to deal with that, and I, I again, I'm I'm fortunate in this regard is that nothing changed in our house. We're just not leaving the house, right? Uh, yeah, that's that's wild, man. It's it's a it's a unique time to be alive, and this will go down in history for sure. Um, yeah, so not like literally nothing changed for you. It, it was I had you know marginal changes, you know, the not leaving the house obviously, but. Um, Besides that, everyone, you know, I had, I have a large family, so I come from a family of nine. So I've got five brothers and three sisters. And, you know, when the pandemic hits, you know, you start getting phone calls from siblings you haven't heard from in years. And some of them didn't even know I worked for Microsoft. <laughs> right. So that's, that just paints a picture of how, you know, infrequent we would talk. But mm-hmm. um, they're like, oh, how is this impacting you? And I'm like, well, I still just work from home. Mm-hmm. I was, I was working from home before. And they're like, wait, what? Now I, I I will own up to it because I I tweeted I tweeted was it this morning or last night I'll own up to it my productivity this week has just been out the window and I don't yeah. know what's up with that it's been one of those things where okay I'm at work I should be work oh wait what's going on in the news you know um yeah. just like all week and now like after we finish streaming I've got my one on one with the manager and I'm gonna be like well I don't know what I've done this week um, yeah yeah so that's that's actually a really good point because I think. Uh, I might be a bit better in terms of the news. So my wife, she suffers from like um, anxiety and panic attacks. And one of the things that she had asked me to do recently was to filter the news for her because she was getting sucked in. And, she, you know, with with the news lately, it is very easy to fall into that mm-hmm. where all of a sudden you are just 
engulfed in this chaotic mess of you know articles to article and it's just like doomsday so it was you know really pulling on her anxiety and and you know stressing her out a lot so she's like can you you know filter it for me such that i consume the news and i'll do so at night and if there's anything that's pressing um that's not terrifying right (laughs) i i will filter it to her and say here are the things that you need to know here are the things that you know and other things just get filtered out so building in that sort of like filtering system has helped her i know a lot um and and uh you know for me i've always kind of been just good i will say good i will not say bad i will say good at consuming news because i you know all the clickbait i don't click on right i don't know what it is you know for me i would rather go read about python and learn that in a day than read the news and just feel sick to my stomach i think negative negativity in the news is it's a vile contagion it can spread through computers right you don't even have to have person-to-person contact negativity is is a contagion absolutely um uh, you know i my my news consumption if we're being honest is probably is probably a bit on the heavy side um and i think in my case it's it's probably more the train wreck type of situation than anything where, where you know yeah. you you know what's going on but at the same time you can't look away because you can't believe what's going on right um and, and, but definitely i can relate to the whole wife being like i'm done just let me know what's going on yeah. <laughs> you're my personal walter <laughs> cronkite will <laughs> oh that's awesome Cool, man. Well, I know that we're, we're pretty much at our time box now, um, so I just want to thank all of our viewers for sticking through today and uh, well, supporting well, our cause. And, and I also want to want to point out that, you know, that if nothing else, these streams are productive in that um, we're helping Luis keep on his, on his schedule, right? <laughs> yes, very, very true. Uh, so we appreciate everyone. So cool very much so uh yeah so we'll see everybody again next week when we do another episode of the dotnet docs thanks everyone and have a good week